Here is how we use uh, stoichiometry with redox reactions. The lab we are going to complete has to, is the titration. And a reminder that titration is when we analyze a chemical and determine usually its concentration. A reminder, we use a titrant that's used uh, in the burette. And we add it to an analyte or a sample until we see an abrupt change in color or we see um, the endpoint occur. What is unique in redox stoichiometry is that we have two common oxidizing agents that are strong and change color. The first one is MnO4, the permanganate ion. It is purple, and when it reacts to become Mn2+, it turns colorless. The other good oxidizing agent we can use for redox stoichiometry is dichromate, which starts off orange and turns a greenish color. So they're both strong oxidizing agents that change color. When we look at the colors they form, permanganate ion forms the Mn2 plus ion. And on here, you can see the manganese 2 ion is colorless. So that's useful because during the titration, it will stay colorless. And then we'll see purple as our end point. I'll explain that in a minute. If we were to use dichromate, dichromate turns into Cr3 plus. That turns green, so we would keep, see a color change from orange to green, a little less obvious, but works okay. A reminder, titration involves a burette, that's this tube, okay, and whoa, this tube up here, and we will put the uh, titrant, which in this case will be the MnO4 minus, that's going to go in the, in the burette, and whatever we're titrating, the sample or the analyte, will go in the Erlenmeyer flask, okay? And we're going to assume that you remember how to do titrations from chemistry 20, okay? So we have a burette with MnO4 minus and the Erlenmeyer flask where we will pipette into. So what, let's look at what happens before, during, and after the titration to see how the color change results. Before the titration starts, we put MnO4 minus the purple material into the burette and we put whatever it is we're titrating, in this case Fe2+, we put this in the Erlenmeyer flask and we're ready to go. Fe2+, if you recall, is colorless. Looking back at our table, Fe2+, has no color. So we know in the Erlenmeyer flask there's going to be no color to start. MnO4- is purple. MnO4-, if you recall back at our equations, requires an acidic environment to be an oxidizing agent. So that means we need to acidify. What we'll do is we will add the H plus in here because we don't want the permanganate ion to start reacting with anything in advance. The permanganate ion is a very strong oxidizing agent. Its concentration changes because it oxidizes organic matter. And so before we work with permanganate ion in any way, we have to find its concentration. So that's what we're doing in the first titration. We're finding the concentration of permanganate ion by titrating a primary standard. An Fe2 plus as a known solution you can create is a primary standard. We acidify it and we're ready to go. Now during the titration, Fe2 plus is oxidized to Fe3 plus. Fe3 plus is colorless, or it's colorless sort of, at low concentrations. If we look at Fe2 plus, it's pale yellow. But pale yellow, when it's super dilute, will be colorless. So during the titration, we're going to see colorless. As permanganate from the burette enters into the flask, it quickly gets converted to Mn2 plus. That Mn2 plus is also colorless, so during the titration is colorless. And finally, at the end point, all of the Fe2 plus is gone, so we get no more Fe2 plus. All we have in the Erlenmeyer flask is Mn2 plus and Fe3 plus, both are colorless. There is no more Fe2 plus to react, so that means if there's one more drop, of MnO4 minus, it's got nothing to react with. And don't forget, the MnO4 minus is really purple. So this one drop of MnO4 minus will make the endpoint color change, and you will see a purple, a very pale pink uh, endpoint color. So that signifies the end of this titration. So to summarize, as long as the sample is reacting, the sample will be colorless. 
When the reaction is complete, any unreacted permanganate ion will turn the sample purple or very pale pink. This volume of titrate added to reach the endpoint is called the equivalence point. Now we have to know the concentration of the titrant, and the problem with the permanganate ion is that it decomposes. So its concentration must be determined or standardized by titrating it against a primary standard. And this is done prior to our titration. So this is what we're doing. The point of this whole titration was to find the concentration of permanganate ion so that we can use that determined concentration of permanganate ion to find the concentration of anything else that we will explore in the lab. The next video will look at the math related to how do I handle my titration data.